We're going to be talking about Parasite today. And in this movie, it's based in Korea. And it's about a family who's in lower income and they stay in like the like a underground basement type of thing in um, Korea. And they don't have nobody in their house is working at the moment and the son of the family his friend tells him tells him about an opportunity to where he can um tutor a quote-unquote rich high school girl so he gets that job and he sees an opportunity to help his family also get jobs in that house so they all make their way into the house somehow the sister becomes the art therapist for the younger brother in the house and then the mom becomes the housekeeper and the dad becomes a driver. But none of them say that they're related to each other. They all just um, say they like know each other through a friend or like a family member because they know it seems sketchy if they are all working in the house. And they also got the jobs besides the, um, the son whose name is, his English name is Kevin in the uh, movie. He's the only one who got it not even really truthfully because he lied and said that he had a college degree and he doesn't. But the rest of them, um, they tricked their way into the house by like getting the people who originally had the jobs fired. Um, so everything is going fine until they the family leaves for the week or weekend or whatever. And they all decide that they wanna like spend the night in the house. And the housekeeper that they got fired before comes back because she needs to get something that she forgot. And it turns out that her husband was living in the basement of that home, of the Kim's home. And so they end up finding out in the new housekeeper, the mom decides that she's gonna tell on them. And they get into this really big fight with everyone and it doesn't end well. It ends up with the old housekeeper and her husband in the basement, like tied up and everything. And then they get out when the son has a birthday party and the husband ends up killing everybody. Not everybody, he ends up <laughs> stabbing the daughter. And then it's just a lot. He, he tries to attack everybody because his wife ended up dying when they were fighting to keep everybody in the basement or to keep him and her in the basement. And yeah, if anybody else has anything to add, that was my synopsis of it. No, I think that was good. Yes. So um, if anybody, how did y'all feel about like the script and the music and stuff in the movie? To talk about the music real quick, um, I liked that it was all um, instrumental or not, well, yeah, instrumental, there was no words. And then you could see in some scenes where like there's a lot going on or when, um, the son, Kevin, his English name, was teaching his dad how to act like a, a driver, or how to be proper. The music like escalated. It was like really loud. And then it just stopped because he, he got carried away. So I think the use of the music in this movie was very intentional, as it is with most movies. But the fact that they used um, music with no words, I think, just amplified all the scenes in itself. I agree. I feel like the music volume as well played like a really like um big part as well. Cause I do remember like in some scenes where like when things were intensifying, the music would kind of get a little bit louder when like when you're discovering the um bunker for the first time, it started out really, really soft and then it started to get like crescendo, like crescendo to a big point once it found out the husband was down there as well. So yeah, I do agree that the music and also not having not having not having any words as well added a good part as well. So like I just like the music had like kind of like um I guess on some like spice it up, but like definitely like made the um scene a lot more exciting. I think uh also the music went hand in hand with the characters as well, because every time the characters came on the, sh the screen, 
the music would switch up either with the volume or the tempo or whatever the case is. So I'm just going to start talking about the characters. Um, the first character I actually want to talk about is the original housekeeper and her name was Moon Guang. Again, I'm going to butcher this. I'm so sorry. But she was a actual housekeeper there first. And at first she comes off as laid back, you know, she just likes to be in her um, boss's business. But, you know, if you've lived with someone for a long time, I guess that's how it's going to be. But no one would know that she has been hiding her husband in the basement for four years. Like you would never know. And I'm sure she has did all that she can to not get kicked out of that job because not no, a regular person who would not just be able to keep up that ruse because it was so convincing. I did not know. Well, personally, I was, <laughs> I was so shocked. I had no idea what was going on. And then when she found out that the um, housekeeper that took her place is actually a family with everybody else. She switched up. She started calling her name. She was like, oh, wait till they find out taking pictures, this, that, and the third. So you you could see how um, her, act, her acting, her acting was really good, first of all, but how she transitioned from calm to super frantic to not evil, but like backstabbing was very quick um and next i would like to talk about the son the little the the rich people's son in the movie he was actually probably one of the smartest individuals in this movie he wasn't he didn't talk that much and um his mother said that he had like mental issues but he knew he knew something was going on he was very intuitive he noticed that uh, Doc, uh, Mr. Kim and the housekeeper that took place and the um, art, the art tutor, quote unquote, they all smell the same. How the parents didn't notice that, I'm not quite sure, but they all smell the same and he almost gave them up and gave them out. Then they, they would have been really sick. And also, since he was in Boy Scout, he understood Morse code. So he would look at the light and he would be able to decipher that. So I thought he was a very pivotal character in this movie. And he probably could have um, saved the whole family if the parents had actually listened to him and listened to what he was saying. Because even when uh, the mom was explaining the part where he was eating cake by himself in the kitchen and he saw someone come up, that wasn't a monster. That was the husband of the actual housekeeper that was in the lady. Uh, that was in the... Um, house um now i'm gonna talk about there's a lot of characters a lot of these characters are played very pivotal roles so i'm gonna try to not talk as much um but i also wanted to talk about kevin or ki Wu. i believe that's his name he basically started this chain of events his friend brought him in and he decided you know what yeah my sister she she is a family of finessers essentially so he puts his sister on obviously not saying that that's his sister but I would he's pretty smart too but I think he got carried away much like a lot of people do when um they start getting more and more when you get something that you you want you you, you start wanting more so I think that he had too much hope into this plan and even when he was planning to get married to their daughter which that was a weird situation in itself I think he was getting way ahead of himself um and I'm gonna talk about uh the mother and the father Mr. and Mrs. Park they were extremely gullible they were probably the most gullible uh set of people in this movie because they believed everything that the family said like how I don't know how they didn't notice that their workers were just dropping like flies. Um, in the beginning, uh, the friend of the son, Kevin, he explained to him that, oh yeah, the mom is very young and simple. And she literally was young and simple. She had not a care in the world. And I guess that comes with being rich. So she didn't question anything um and so did Mr. Park 
you would think he's the head of the house, you know, he's bringing in the money, but he has no idea what's going on in his house. He just goes with the flow. Um, and then I'm going to talk about the housekeeper's husband who is crazy. The housekeeper's husband was crazy. Um, towards the end, I believe he just went into a kill or be kill situation because he didn't care at that point. His wife is dead. Um, this family the mess him over. So he's going to go up there and he's going to wreak havoc because he has nothing to lose it was either he killed be killed or he just gets sent to jail and he ended up just dying um but he wasn't an idiot which is why he was doing the morse code and stuff like he had a shrine of mr park but that that was that was just what he was doing he wasn't he wasn't an idiot uh, last but not least i'm gonna talk about mr kim and um jessica who is father and daughter and related to Kevin and the housekeeper and whatnot. Mr. Kim seemed like he didn't have like, you know, very good sense, even when his son was teaching him how to be a driver and whatnot and what to say, what not to say. It seemed like he didn't know what was going on, but he was very good at playing an old and experienced driver. Like, you wouldn't tell that this man has been living in the basement aside from the smell. You wouldn't be able to tell that. And at the end, when he killed Mr. Park, you can see in his face that it completely, it looks like he was in another state of mind. And I feel like him being able to capture that in his face was very well, he did that very well. And you can tell when he just snaps back and it's like, wow, I'm here and I just killed this man, and he just, he just left, as he should, he doesn't really want to get caught or go to jail, but he left, and he went, and he hid in the bunker, um, and then Jessica, okay, she was probably the smartest in the family, very money hungry, very greedy, she doesn't really care about anybody else except for her and her family, um, she managed to con uh, the mother out of some more money, and I could go on and on, but you've all seen the movie, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy, Um, yeah, I kind of agree with you about the whole how the characters were acting. Like, really, Jessica and Mr. Kim were probably the top two on how well it was that they were able to just con the rich family into believing what they were selling, really. Which also when like, they were able to sell it more, I feel like because I don't know, it was like the way they were dressed to me which I guess I'm getting into the costume design of the whole thing now, but it kind of showed how like, I feel like these was showing like how these poor people still had like good attire, which also kind of made me think of the fact that maybe this was like the only clothes they were saving up to use for like their good days, which I felt was like the subtle difference when it came to the costumes of like, they were like really poor but they still had enough to slide by as at least like high or middle class. Because if they showed up how they dressed on the daily, I feel like that would just would have been a total tell. But also getting into the costumes, I think the settings had a lot to play into it because like I said, like when they were at home, it was like an entire different wardrobe. It was like just plain t-shirts and sometimes they weren't even wearing shoes. I noticed like Kevin walked around a lot, not wearing his shoes and just like raggedy pants pretty much. But as soon as like stepping up to like the houses, like even the placement of the houses just told a lot about it because they literally lived in a basement and then they had to literally go uphill, go up to see these upper class people, which I felt like is really telling of like where you lived it wasn't even just a, a title of social class of upper and lower, but really, physically being upper and lower so yeah a lot of the the design and costume of it in the setting really kind of told the story of why they were so upset which is kind of like back to character like Mr. Kim he just really got upset about the way he smelled like that was the whole trigger and I feel like that's what played a lot into why 
what happened afterwards. I also wanted to add the fact that um, they actually lived in the basement and then um, the housekeeper and well, the housekeeper's husband lived in the basement of the rich people's house is, is very funny. It's, it's the same. They're both, both these people or families, I guess you could call them, are pretty similar, just in different ways. That's true. Like the whole basement concept was like poor people were just always going to be lower, like always in like a metaphorical or a literal basement. Yeah, I think that kind of plays into the um, psychological impact of it as well, because I didn't even realize until you said it just now that the fact that the rich people literally are upper class and living above them, like, like you said, in higher standards in all regards. Um, I feel like that really makes you see the movie differently and really think about it differently. Um, but in addition to that, or did you have anything more to say about that part? Oh, no, you can go. Okay. Um, in addition to that, um, I feel like another psychological impact that it had was it was trying to get really get the audience to see like what the lower class was actually feeling because like before as well with the um with Mr. Kim being really upset about him saying something about the way he smells, it showed that like something that you think is so small or it's so easy to fix for somebody who's who doesn't have much it's something that's really big to them and they can't change it at the drop of a hat like somebody who has more might have and it makes you think about like what you say to people and how you treat people that come from different um backgrounds than you um i also think another big impact that the movie had was how quickly it changed because for me personally i felt like it was kind of slow in the beginning and and then all of a sudden, like once it started uncovering the secrets about like the husband being in the basement and then finding out that they were all lying about where they came from, it just went from zero to a hundred, like super, super fast. And the whole, like the big part about the birthday party and the daughter getting killed and Mr. Kim getting killed, like all of that happened in the last like 40 minutes of the movie. So it really like brought for me personally, like it brought me to the edge of my seat and had me, it got me more interested all of a sudden. And then I also think that the ending was crazy because it, I thought that when Kevin was writing the letter back to his dad, I thought that that was actually happening and it wasn't. And it really kind of like, I'm not gonna say like it broke me cause that's kind of dramatic, but it like really affected me <laughs> and it shows that a lot of times people who don't have much, like they're stuck to just dream and just hope and, and like try to work for things to get better, but you really don't know. And it can seem so close, but then it's so far away. And then also going back to the whole title of the movie of Parasite, they were literally like leeching off of the like people's house and nobody knew until the end. But I thought that was interesting. But I feel like you could tell, like, through the whole movie that that's what it was, like, trying to get at with that. But, yeah. Well, I completely agree. Because at the end, when I realized that, wait a minute, this man is still living in the basement. They didn't actually get this house. I was so shocked. I'm like, come on, bro. Cut them some slack. You know, they weren't that good of people. But it, they deserve something. I also wanted to add that... um. Just in general, when the uh, Kim family was just getting into the heads of the rich people and planting different seeds, like, oh, look at your worker doing this. I mean, they weren't doing it directly, but they they made sure that the, the, the Park family was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I have these kind of people working for me. So I thought that was kind of crazy, too. I also think I also thought um, that that was crazy. And then, like, just back to the ending, I just feel like the contrast between like the plot, like the plot in, in itself was crazy for the majority of the movie, but the ending is just like something that will always stick with me. Like, even if I, years and years come and like someone mentions like, oh, Parasite movie, like I might not remember the rest of the plot, but I'm a remember, I remember, I'm sorry, the 
ending because it's just so like just such a strong ending in terms of like the killing and just like everything coming full circle in the movie um that's something like very psychological and I I also feel like um you kind of have to think critically about the plot in order to understand the ending for real um and just really understand what's going on in the movie and think about like the overall theme and like motifs in the movie um which of course is like um you know the wealth disparity which I guess is kind of getting into the script so basically um the plot kind of symbolizes like the wealth disparities in wealth disparity the theme of wealth disparity in three different aspects so like of course you know the parks are wealthy and they own you know the nice house they're able to hire people to um tutor and you know keep up keep their house um and stuff like that and basically they depend they depend on their basically impoverished workers for everything um they need them to operate and to function and you know basically help upkeep the things that they have, including their children and of course their house. And then um, the second aspect is basically, of course, Kiwu's family. And, you know, like we were saying, their plot to get their whole family hired by the parks and just, you know, basically put their whole family on. Um, and then, you know, Moon Guang, I'm sorry, I'm butchering this. Of course, her hiding her, you know, her husband in the in the basement. That's like another aspect because they literally are depending on the park's resources, which is their home, their utilities, you know, all that um, for survival. And so that's really like just three different aspects of the wealth disparity, and like even um, even thinking about just real life, like the rich, you know, are rich and the poor are poor, like and you know, the rich have all these resources and are sometimes, you know, greedy and, um, well, in most cases, well, the wealthy people in America are greedy and basically not only do they not, most, a lot of wealthy people in America don't share their resources um, with those who are impoverished. Of course, there are many that do, but, you know, there are a lot of, a lot of greedy, wealthy people who, um, depend on the lower class, the middle class, um, to help them upkeep what they have, what their wealth has bought them um, and afforded them. And so that was really just, you know, what the plot was based around. And then also just like the code switching between um, Kivu and his family, their interactions in private and amongst themselves and at home um, in that impoverished setting was totally different from their interactions while in the presence of their employers, basically the Park family, um, you know, and speaking of like the Park family didn't even realize that they were um, related, that the Kims were all related until basically towards the end of the movie. Um, so they basically put that facade on um, and pretended to just, you know, know each other in terms of um, being associates and acquaintances um, and, you know, their interactions were just different. So that was basically the script part. Um, but the psychological impact, the ending, I feel like was the most psychological part of the movie just because it was so um, dramatic and just such a strong ending to bring everything together. I did kind of want to add one thing about the psychological part because it really like irked my soul was when the whole fight with like the 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 ho original housekeeper and her husband in the basement and then the Kim family arguing about like pretty much because the mother Kevin's mother I believe is the one who was like call ready to call the police on this poor woman and her husband and it's like it's always the the how like sometimes like being around like rich people or like even getting that praise I believe somebody mentioned of like the rich folk kind of sat into their head like I'm still better than you even though we're both broke like we're still both the poor people it's just poor people attacking poor people and that was just something I wanted to mention yeah no that was crazy because even when the old housekeeper was like um she was like we're both poor like we both need help and she was like I'm not poor like she got real uppity real fast no for real why would you lie like that that's why your family fell and you got caught 
honestly like even like her tone changed too because like when she was begging um the mom the kim's mom for like, oh hey don't, don't tell anyone she's like oh hey sis like don't call me sis don't call me sis and then when her family got disturbed she's like, she's like oh hey sis like then the um hey sis like you know we can sleep between us like now it's cool now it's, now it's cool because now her secrets were exposed as well like literally like they're in the same exact boat but she wanted to use leverage above her which honestly was her downfall if she would have just cooperated in the end it probably wouldn't have escalated that quickly but yeah that's what i thought about it. and also as well i peeped that like when the first housekeeper got fired um uh, mr park was like to um mrs park like oh I'm kind of glad she's gone because she ate like twice as much as the average person. God, I don't know if you guys keep that line, but I was like, oh, that's interesting. Why she's eating so much? And she's like, you know, she's not, she's, I don't know, she's a little cute, chubby, but she wasn't like eating for two people type thing. So like, I was kind of confused by that. But when I saw her husband in the basement, I was like, it's like, oh, it all makes sense now as to why, and also, also as to why she was so adamant, like constantly ringing the doorbell about um getting inside the house and why she came and why she came when um the parks were gone that also hinted to that as well but um i think that um another uh part that we want to talk about maybe is also like the editing i think the editing of the movie is actually really really well it kind of like just from the tones like that the, the color tones really help really help tell the point of the story because I do remember like when the first house, housekeeper was going to, for the first time to the basement how like or to or the bunker or whatever like the the tones are that usually like you know like light light yellowish tones in the house became really dark and grim and like a green type of undertone which kind of like made me think like oh okay something's definitely gonna happen like really really bad right now in this moment so that was actually a really good contrast and then also um a good parallel kind of like there's parallel parallel and got the whole entire movie between the kims and the parks especially when the whole rainstorm happened um for the parks the rainstorm oh for the parks the, the rainstorm oh okay we to cancel the our camping trip because of the rain but for the kims the rainstorm destroyed their entire in their entire like living space like the whole house was like up to their waist deep in water like it was really really bad and like the entire even their entire neighborhood was just experiencing that as well like there's flooding everywhere people's belongings were in the streets they were sleeping they were sleeping in the gym like it was really, really bad and miss kim the next day was like oh hey can you guys, guys come in blah 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 for for i think the son's name was da song i think his name was for da song's birthday party and um, just like carrying life as usual, you know, like it kind of just showed us to well how some things that can be so detrimental to lower class, such as like, you know, natural disasters or stuff like that doesn't even, even affect like the higher class as well. I wanted to add like with the camera work, I noticed, especially in the beginning, it, it was, it's like a very um, panoramic, type view like when they would show or transition from one person's face to the next it was like a really smooth transition I don't know the best way to describe it but it was it reminded me of uh panoramic views but if no one else has anything to add that will conclude our podcast <laughs>